Appalachian State, invites this guy to give a speech in Congress calling for money for so-called global warming, etc. You understand that this is nothing but a big lie, gigantic propaganda show. In a nutshell, what would you do in a short version? I only have 30 seconds or less. How would you solve the bum problem? Um, there's not a easy answer, but again, I think uh, going to where they oh, are. Bill, Bill, as a psychiatrist, what about reopening the mental hospitals? Um, I think it should be expanded and us reevaluate the current commitment laws. All right, fair enough. Yes, another Napa State Hospital in, in, in Napa County, for example. That used to be a, a nut house. In fact, half of the so-called poets in San Francisco in the Cafe Trieste used to be there or would be there. Instead of sitting in the cafe in North Beach, they'd be in Napa State getting the care that they need instead of jacking themselves up on coffee and wine and marijuana. But that's uh, Doc Savage talking. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. My gold ring. Always the unexpected because I get bored easily. The fact of the matter is I get bored easily, and I'm not going to just do the stories that you could read for yourself on some really excellent websites. Today we're talking about a lifestyle problem called bums in the streets of America. Everybody is, everyone sees them, everyone avoids them, everyone's been accosted by them one way or the other, and no one talks about it anymore. Have you noticed that you haven't heard the word homeless since uh, Obama was in, put onto the throne have you noticed it's not an issue? Did, did you put two and two together yet? How that happened? Did the homeless problem go away? No, it's gotten worse. But the liberal press won't acknowledge it, because if they do, they have to acknowledge that their philosophy of liberalism has failed. And so the government should do something about it. But we don't have an opposition party. There is no Republican Party to speak of. You know, I got to talk about that for a minute. I was taking a bicycle ride before the show. And luckily, I'm not John Kerry. I didn't break a leg. And something dawned on me. We have a two-party system that is, is as antiquated as the, the buggy and the horse and buggy. Most sane parliamentary systems have a spectrum of parties, which gives people who feel alienated some voice, whether they be on the far left, like Obama. You see, if we had a parliamentary system... Obama would have been the head of a small splinter group, the, uh, let us say, progressive socialist wing of, of the country. He never would have been president because he would have been what he is, progressive socialist, i.e. Communist, Communist Party USA. And then we'd have parties all the way on the far right and then parties across the spectrum so that everyone in America who's politically aware could identify with some party, work for it, and feel that they have some representation, some seats at the table. Right now, most of us feel that we have no seats at the table because both parties are corrupt. Both parties have merged into one. We have a one-party corrupt banana republic system in this country. So I was thinking about it. When I was a kid, there were basically three television, three television stations. There was ABC, CBS, NBC for news. And then there was Channel 13 in New York, which is public television, which nobody watched except sort of the loonies on the Upper West Side where they played the piano every once in a while and you hear Vivaldi music. But it was basically two, four, and five, I think. Televisions were manufactured primarily by one or two companies. When I was a kid, there were two bicycle manufacturers. I remember my early, I think it was uh, Schwinn. I remember taking the wheel apart. I remember discovering the ball bearings and saying, holy God, I didn't know these were in here. And I, I had the pleasure of oiling the ball bearings on my Schwinn bicycle wheels. That's how I learned how to fix them. One of the things I learned how to fixing. So I said, wait a minute, look at all the different manufacturers of bicycles today. There were two or three then. There was Schwinn, there was Raleigh and Gardner, electric trains. There was Lionel and then there was American Flyer. Lionel was the king, American Flyer was not even a prince in terms of uh, uh, air, uh, you know, toy trains. So what I'm getting at is when I was a child, there were two, three options in everything. Now there are hundreds of options in everything and we're still stuck with a two-party system. Why are there not dozens of options in politics? Why are we still functioning as though it's 1865 in the United States of America? When are we going to get rid of the two-party monopoly, which is really a one-party monopoly, which is really two-card Monty with one P under both cards? 
when the heck are we going to get real representation in this country, is what I thought to myself on the bicycle as I was riding this morning. Now let's go to some of the callers. I couldn't wait to get that out of myself today. By the way, it's really not the first time I thought of it. It's frankly in my forthcoming great blockbuster called Government Zero. It's uh, under the solutions chapter of Government Zero, which can only be ordered at this time at barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com. You'll learn much more about it after Labor Day when I actually start reading from the book so you could see why I wrote it and why I think it's very important that you add it to your library. MAL, Washington, Rob, go ahead on the homeless bum problem. What's on your mind? Uh, well, big fan here. I just want to thank you for taking my call. I'm uh, speaking from pretty uh, experienced position here. I've flown to probably 20 or 30 times to San Francisco in the past eight or ten years for business. I go down to technology meetings around Sunnyvale and Mountain View. Mm -hmm. Anyway, last right. week I flew in there. Normally I flew, flew in a day or two early with my wife. We go down to the pier and walk around Chinatown. And, you know, we, we really enjoy the city. Last right. week, for what, personal reasons I won't get into, my wife, I went by myself. My wife didn't go, which I will never take her again now. But what it turned into, I went down there, took a tab, uh, taxi cab down to the wharf, had lunch, started to walk around. People were urinating. People were like Google, like these eyes, like these vampires were staring at me, these home, homeless people. I do work around medical technology, so I do like to be clean. I, I must, in full disclosure. Yes, yeah, San Francisco has degenerated into a, into a fourth world cesspool under the Democrat uh, regime of Mayor Lee. They are interested only in feathering their own nests. They have abandoned the streets to the bums who have taken over like jackals. And they are driving taxpaying citizens back into their homes and they're driving tourists away. I don't know what it's going to take, but I'm glad that you have seen the difference in only a few small years here in the city that I love very much. What it's going to take, I don't know. I do know that we have a homeless problem in the city that is not really a homeless problem. It's a criminal problem under the guise of a homeless problem. It's a psychiatric problem under the guise of a homeless problem. And there are people making fortunes off the people in the streets. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Well, once again, the Savage Nation has uh, touched a raw nerve, and this time in talking about the bum problem in San Francisco in particular. But it's not limited to San Francisco. But here was a caller from Washington, D.C., who comes here regularly, who just called the show, who said he had a horrendous experience on Fisherman's Wharf with men defecating, peeing in the streets, which we have been talking about. It's not that the police cannot do their job. It's that the police have been handcuffed by the liberal lunatics who run the city who have told the police to look the other way as grown men drop their pants in front of whole families and defecate in the streets. Dogs have more self-respect than some of these mentally ill, uh, aggressive individuals. And it's time somebody stepped in because the city is out of control. And I want more of the homeless horror stories until eventually even the snotty liberals who pretend the city is so perfect. I love they talk about world-class cuisine. World-class cuisine, that's all that's on their mind. Can you enjoy a meal while someone's defecating outside a window? You idiots, you. Look at the entire ecology of San Francisco. you got broken streets, you got bums out of control, you got corrupt politicians, you tell them what a wonderful city it is. I've lived there since 1974, longer than most of the people who call themselves city residents. I know what needs to be done in this city. What we need is a conservative leader in the city to clean the city up. That's what we need. Anyway, I want to mention a few things as well as that on the program. You talk about craziness. I want to show you liberalism, how insane it is. I'll read you the headline. You decide. I found it on worldtribune.com. Senior Hamas official treated at private Israeli hospital. A senior leader of Hamas is recuperating in an Israeli hospital after undergoing spinal surgery, a report said. Here is their arch enemy, a top member of the terror group Hamas, who goes to Israel for spinal surgery. And Israel is glad to help him in and say, oh, maybe they'll love us if we show them how what wonderful Jews we are. Let's give them our hospitals. Let's bring them into our hospitals. So they take in the head of a terror group, the brother of senior Palestinian Authority figure, Jibril Rajoub, and they operate on him at our Suda Medical Center's Ramat Haya Hospital in Tel Aviv. And the Israeli hospitals, as you well know, have already treated high-ranking Palestinian officials in the past, and what have they gotten from it? Tell me what they've gotten for it. 
Tell me if liberalism results in a more humane reaction from your enemies. Has it worked with anyone? Has it ever worked with anyone? Has kindness ever worked? No, it's another philosophical mistake. It never worked, never will work, and it never has worked. And it'll never work in the future. But what can I tell you? Otto Spengler wrote it in 1908 when he wrote The Death of the West. He saw what was coming. He didn't exactly say it would be a result of the failed philosophy of liberalism, but he said, I see the future. And in the future, the West will die and Asia will rise. End of story. Enjoy the ride. Let's go to KSFO. Rochelle, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hello, Mr. Savage. Uh, such a pleasure to talk to you. I've listened to you for about 20 years, and you have... Wow, that's nice. A real, a real loyal listener. Well, hopefully I'll be here another 20 years. I doubt it, but nevertheless, it's nice to dream. What is your homeless bum story? I was, me and my family, my two sons, we were walking on San Francisco Pier. My sons had gotten a little ahead of me, and there was a bum on, the, on uh, one of the benches there. He started screaming at me, calling me all kinds of F and B and this oh. and that and the other and i just went dude what are you do what are you doing and he oh that's disgusting how, wait, oh, hold on hold on and how how old are your sons michelle my sons were seven and four at the time and they didn't know what to do to protect their mother who was being uh, verbally accosted correct absolutely not and i told them go on go on and they were just standing there looking at me thankfully my husband was also with me. He was a little ways behind me. He's seen the man leap up, and I'm not one that will back down, and I told the guy, you better sit down or he's going to get put down. About that time, he come up with a knife, and my husband came up and cold-cocked him, knocked him out, dead to Really? And was, your husband, and was your husband arrested by the uh, city of San Francisco for protecting his family? Nope. Uh, we called the cops as we were gathering up our stuff, and unfortunately, and as we were walking away, he said, that guy just tried to attack us, and we just left. We and just the cops left. didn't, wait, and you're telling me you were not arrested in this maniac city of mine? This was about nine years ago. So. Oh, nine years ago. Forget about it. Today, under this lunatic administration, your husband will go to jail for defending his wife and children. Forget about it. Oh, no, no, you got to let them knife you. No, no, there were a lot of crap in the street like dogs. There were a lot of attack people, spit on them, call your girlfriend the name. That's the wonderful city of San Francisco. Ding, ding. It's no longer rice aroni, my friend. It's uh, defecation aroni. Thanks for the call. You think I have fun uh, doing this? You're right, I'm having a lot of fun. You know why? Because I want to embarrass the city. I want people to squirm in this city. I want all of the phony liberals to be revulsed by what I'm saying. I want them to say I'm worse than the homeless bums. But let me tell you something. They're so mentally ill here, they won't even acknowledge that there's a homeless bum problem. So we'll keep talking about it until something is done. Paul, KSFO, in the sickest city in America, the... Um, let me put it to you this way. 30 years ago, I was doing research in Tonga, which is sort of one of the most remote places on earth. And I remember there was a Britisher who uh, would drink in the morning, a lot of alcohol. I'd get up in this guest house I was staying in, and he'd be drinking beer at 7 or 8 or 6 in the morning. And he started to get very angry about Tonga because he was stationed there for some reason. And he would say that my friend... He said, Tonga is the, I, I can't, that's a family show. Tonga is the AH of the empire. I thought it was quite funny. It's something you'd write in your journal because I'd never heard anything like that. But then I got home, I realized San Francisco was the very same thing of America. San Francisco likes to think that it's the tip of the, uh, the, the uh, trends in America. Everything is done here first. It's not. It is the end of the alimentary canal in America. San Francisco is the tail end of the alimentary canal for the United States of America. If you, would draw, if you were to make the nation into an animal figure with a pen, it would not be the head of the animal. It would be the other side of the animal. And it's time that the other side of the animal recognized that the whole world is catching on to this. Pete, WABC, your homeless horror story. Go ahead, please. 
Mike, how are you? Listen, it was a, I used to deliver a soda. I 